тому що кожен буде розстріляний. Uh, no an interpreter, 36-year-old Katya Krasnorutska explains hiding in a house in her hometown near the city of Kharkiv, about 15 miles from the Ukraine-Russian border. She says February 25th, Russian troops occupied the village. They shut off the gas, electricity, and communication. A month later, March 25th, her husband ventured outside after breakfast. And maybe one second later, I found out that uh, he was shot dead. He had been shot dead by a Russian sniper. With bombs exploding around them, Ukrainian troops came to rescue them the next day. They uh, told everyone that they have three minutes to leave. We had to leave the body of my husband behind because we need to walk maybe 10 miles. After taking a road filled with landmines, Katia says they made it to the city of Lviv, then to Poland, Germany, Mexico City, Tijuana, across the border to San Diego, and then to Cleveland and Parma. My aunt lives here, and that's why she took us into her house. Katia says the toughest part of the journey was when she and her 11-year-old son made it to Mexico City. I was given a visa, but he was not given a visa, and they wanted to take him out from me. Either he's coming with me, or I'm not going anywhere. I, I want everybody to have good skies, peaceful skies, people like this. Uh, keep coming every day, and we see all these, dr some more dramatic, some less dramatic stories, but there's a lot of refugees coming, and we're trying to help as a church. Deacon Roman Skalski of Slavic Full Gospel Church in Barview Heights says they are helping refugees the best they can. He says there were two from the destroyed city of Mariupol Sunday and five families last week. Some kids in Afri Africa, some in Australia, and all over the world. You know. Katia is an assistant principal at a school in Ukraine, and amazingly, she continues to stay in touch with many of her students every morning online. Some people had to pay such a big price uh, to have this peace.